Hi, this is Christy, ChristyMatthewsOnline.com and ChristyJMatthews.com. Hope you're having a great day. It's been a while since I've done a keto uh, video, but there's been some interesting research, and uh, I just listened to a podcast about two weeks ago with a gentleman named Dominic Agnostino, Dr. Dominic Agnostino. And I actually went back and listened to this podcast three times, and I've got six pages of notes that I wanted to share with you. And why I went back to this interview so many times is that it's something that hit near and dear to me is the link between the ketogenic diet and the possible prevention and or suppression of Alzheimer's disease. Now, there's no, no question that changing the dietary lifestyle, whatever it is, if it's not working for you and possibly adopting ketogenic lifestyle, it is a proven fact that it will improve productivity. And productivity, heck, when we can improve our productivity, we're better business people. So having said that, let me break down some of, of what's going on and try to uh, uh, explain, give some credibility to what I'm saying here. So Dr. Ignostino is a neuroscientist, a researcher who was contracted through the military research arms of DARPA and the Office of Navy Research. And his work there was, uh, particularly with the Navy, was helping um, our, our soldiers get prepared for the most hostile environments possible. And their preparation had to be quick. So there's no question that in the military's mind, when you look at MREs, for instance, the meals ready to eat, they're a very high fat type of um, preparatory meal. They're very high in calories, they're very high in fat. And so they weren't interested in, in the meals. What they wanted to do was look at how to get their soldiers ready quickly so that their brains can be protected from the neuroprotective, neuroprotective qualities that ketones provide. See, in their research, there was no question that ketones provide neuroprotection. And why they're interested in this, of course, is due to traumatic brain injury, especially with the you know, advent of, of the bombs that, that our military is encountering, IEDs and so forth. So, and, and our, our veterans are coming home with TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, having seizures. So the military wanted to get on top of this and understand the research. And also, like I said, protect their soldiers who are not injured from getting injured, uh, especially when they're underwater. This is why the Navy was very interested in this, because as you go deeper down in the water, there's so much pressure and can create inflammation on the brain. So they wanted to protect their, their SEALs, their, uh, their divers, from uh, possible injury to their brain. So hopefully that, uh, that helps put some uh, credentials behind what I'm talking about. And this has been uh, Dr. Ignostino's life work. He fell into this research because he was interested in prevention of seizures. And this is how he got connected to the military. So in his, when he first got into the research area, he, he realized that the ketogenic diet had much more benefits than just preventing seizures. In fact, back in the olden days, the ketogenic diet was really not the most healthy diet because it was so high in fats, and but it was the type of fats and very restrictive. So ironically, it worked for for uh, people who were having seizures, particularly children, where medication wasn't working for them. So it made him leave, go into further research and get into 
how ketones really work and how far superior they are to burning glucose. So what is the ketogenic diet? Well, current research says it's not, it's not Atkins, it's not your grandfather's ketogenic diet. Current ketogenic lifestyle or the diet, I don't even want to call it a diet, the lifestyle, because it is a different way of living, far different than the world I grew up in with the food pyramid and a lot of misinformation, which has really led to a whole generation of very unhealthy people. And this is, when I talk about and linking this to productivity, unhealthy people have created an enormous cost on our society, both in medical expense, disability, uh, long-term diseases, uh, impact on the family. It goes on and on. This is a very, very expensive problem. And if you were trying to build a business, for instance, like most of you who are coming on uh, Facebook and social media, a, a lot of what I talk about has to do with entrepreneurship. If you are not healthy, it has a direct link in how to build your business. In fact, a lot of people come online because for some reason they're not able to work in their, their previous profession. I'm one of those people. I had to leave my full-time real estate career because of fibromyalgia. But what led me to the ketogenic diet had nothing to do with trying to prevent fibromyalgia is because I just kept getting bigger and bigger. I was on medications and I just could not control the weight gain I was having. So I fell into finding keto. I just was led to seeing some research. It interests me. I tried it. And next thing you know, my fibromyalgia was going into remission. Let's put it this way. I still feel the effects of it, but nothing like, like what has happened in the past. And Dr. Ignostinos, I can't say his name very well, but Dr. Ignostinos' research supports a lot about what I'm going to share with you. Uh, what they have found in the brain, in fact, Al, when you're looking at, let me back up a little bit. I've already touched a little bit about productivity, but let me talk about how keto, they're finding a link to Alzheimer's. In fact, they're calling Alzheimer's type three diabetes. And the reason is, is that they have found, it's proven, it is not, it is without question, that those with Alzheimer's disease has what's called hypometabolism of glucose in the brain, which means they're not able to produce, uh, to metabolize the glucose in the brain. And they feel it has to do with the dietary lifestyle of that person that of many years preceding Alzheimer's. In fact, the inability to metabolize the glucose in the brain is what creates the plaques and the tangles because they can't be broken up and pushed out of the brain. It's fabulous and fascinating. And if you've ever had to deal with anybody who has uh, Alzheimer's disease, hey, Margaret, thanks for joining me. If you've ever had to deal with somebody with Alzheimer's disease, you want to do anything you can to try to help them. And what, I, what I'm learning is that uh, the ketogenic diet can help a great deal. Now, what goes on in the brain is that, like I say, the, the glucose, well, actually the brain is insulin resistant. If you go back to the, the whole premise of ketogenic uh, diet and why it works so well is that the focus is on not spiking glucose and not spiking insulin. And they have found when, it's, when they're researching the heart, how much more beneficial by producing ketones in the body is. And so they've linked that to the same thing in the brain. If you reduce your glucose uh, intake, quit spiking the glucose levels and quit spiking the insulin, 
your brain is going to function too. And by allowing your body to make ketones, all of a sudden you start having improved cognitive function. There's a doctor, uh, what is her name? Dr. Mary Newport, I believe is her name. Her husband uh, has, has Alzheimer's disease. I, uh, I'm not sure if he's still alive now or not, but she started, let me back up. She's also a researcher in brain health. And so with her research, she would known that, let's give this try of MCT oils and ketogenic diet on her husband. And what she found by just providing MCT oils in a very high quantity and cleaning up his diet, that his cognitive function improved dramatically, so much so that it was showing on the test scores for cognitive improvement, his recall, his ability to motor skills, the whole bit, that those things that are so affected uh, when Alzheimer's progress. So folks, what I want to tell you is that, you know, I've, I've never been a fan of exogenous ketones because what's happening right now is that a lot of people are looking at keto as a fad diet, and it is not fad. It is proven research. The problem is, is that many savvy marketers are jumping on the bandwagon and are making lofty claims about what their products can do. So I've been very reluctant to get behind one because I just don't believe that the research is solid enough to warrant some of the claims that some of these uh, manufacturers are promoting. However, having said that, it is proven that exogenous ketones, and I say that with a asterisk, is proven, especially and, it, and supplementing with exogenous ketones are very important. Hey, Shyla, good to see you. It's very important about raising the levels into the brain so that that neuroprotection can happen. And the only way to get them so high when somebody has has a diseased brain is by supplementation. But here's the catch: not all of the exogenous ketones can prove that they can actually penetrate the, la the, the layers in the brain to actually do what they're supposed to do. That's what's lacking in the research right now. So if you're gonna go out and look for exogenous ketones and think that, hey, this is gonna be the end all be all, good morning, Shyla, that this is gonna be the end all be all to resolving Alzheimer's, we're not there yet, but it's very promising. So let me wrap this up and try to bring it home for you. Here's the thing. If you want to be more productive in your business, especially if you're a baby boomer, you know, when I was in my 30s and I, I saw my grandmother end up with dementia and Alzheimer's, it really didn't connect to me at that point in time that that can happen to me. But watching what my father went through, and how fast it took his life and how fast it robbed his, his quality of life. Hey, it's got my attention. I'm a baby boomer. I'm in my 50s. This is when this stuff really starts to show up. And a lot of you out there in the internet world who's watching right now are in the same place. So I'm suggesting to you, why not take a look at this? and see how maybe making some changes in your own lifestyle can prevent, maybe prevent Alzheimer's from robbing your future as well, or that of a loved one. So here's what some things that were suggested by Dr. Ignostino. First of all, he suggests trying some different lifestyles. Okay? Experiment with your diet. However, if you're feeling fatigue, if you've got lethargy, if you're getting skin allergies, if you're having inflammation, something's not right. You need to make some changes. And in his research, ketogenic has definitely been far superior than anything else that he has tried. He's one that had terrible eczema. And after all different experiments with uh, di dietary changes where he'd give himself three, four, five months on trying 
different things within his diet, ketogenic was the one that improved the, the greatest. And you know, with like with insulin resistance, uh, where our, our pancreas isn't working right, and we're having other inflammation in our body, why not consider an inflammation happening in the brain? And that is what's happening. So ketogenic actually helps reduce inflammation throughout your body. And if it's reducing it throughout your body, it's going to help your brain as well. So here's what he says. Go to the ketogenic diet if you're having some of those issues. Also, what you want to do is there are other areas that we've got to focus on too for our brain health, and it will help our productivity, is work on our relationships. We're all here on social media. We should be working on our relationships with people. If we keep just pounding it and pounding it and just trying to make a sale with people without building relationships, we're really not getting the pleasure and helping ourselves nurture what we really need. See, when you're just out there trying to pound and make sales, that's stressful. But when you're out there building relationships and offering value to other people that may impact their lives, that's very rewarding. And that's important to your overall health. Secondly, got to focus on nutrition. Isn't that interesting that nutrition is second in his mind? Relationships are number one. Hey, and if you don't have things right within your family and you don't have a very good support group, that in and of itself can be the number one thing that can cause a lot of these problems. Focus on nutrition, exercise, get outdoors. Current research is saying that if you get out, outdoors and can get in touch with nature again, it's kind of a, a, a neuro reset to your body. Because living within the city and within all the noise that we're around, it is very hard on the body. So just connecting with nature again is, is very healing. We can't control our genetics, but having uh, working on those other areas will definitely increase our odds for productivity, preventing Alzheimer's, and creating longevity in our life. So this... Thank you, Shyla. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to write up a blog post about this and get into all of the other details that I'm not sharing here in the video because I didn't want to get so technical. Uh, I've got six pages of notes here, and I think the technical information is important. So if you're interested in that, I'll break it down for you, and you'll find it on my blog. And if not, I hope that today's video helped you out in some sort of way, got you thinking about some things. Maybe reevaluate some of the things that you're doing. I know for me personally, huge change in my life. And I, I think I, I, some of you may have known when I had surgery a few months ago, my doctor made a comment about how healthy my tissues look to him. Because when he did surgery on me, you know, five, six years ago, I wasn't in the peak of health I'm in right now. So that was proof to me that what I'm doing is making a difference, not only on the outside, but on the inside too. Shyla, my blog is christyjmatthews.com. And I'll link it here. I'll make sure that the link goes up here on this live and I'll probably do a separate post. Okay, Shyla? Um, anyway, folks, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Uh, did a little rambling. I didn't mean to do that. We're here almost 20 minutes into this video. Really appreciate you. Come visit my, my blog to get the full article on this. I'll see you next time. You have a great day. Bye.